All right, so we got some good old fashioned drama. We're invading on MLB's turf a little bit by complaining about voters, but you know what? It's fun to do. And listen, uh, it's the story that's out there, crazy story that's out there. In fact, uh, it's the Rogers versus the media war. Uh, it will never end. It's like the war on drugs. A lot of interesting stuff. Let's just jump into it. So this first block of text, it's from, there's actually two articles that I'm taking all this text from. I'll link both of those in the description below. But basically what it says is that uh, a guy named Hub, uh, who is a veteran Chicago sports writer, and he told the city's uh, 670, the score radio station on Tuesday, that he will not cast his NFL MVP vote for Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Uh, the article goes on to say that he delivered a scathing review of Rodgers and did not pull any punches. The quote is, I don't think you can be the biggest jerk in the league and punish your team and your organization and your fan base the way he did and be the most valuable player. He said, has he been the most valuable player on the field? Yeah, you could make that argument, but I don't think he is clearly much more valuable than Jonathan Taylor or Cooper Cup or maybe even Tom Brady. So from where I sit, the rest of it is why he's not going to be my choice. Now, me personally, I think it's equally as insane that he's sitting here and saying that like Tom Brady is his fourth choice and that Jonathan Taylor and Cooper Cup have been equally valuable to Aaron Rodgers. Like to me, that alone should just get you to not, to not have an MVP vote. Unless I guess your argument is you don't uh, count positional value. Uh, you don't take positional value into account because there's like a ton of data supporting that like no a quarterback matters way more than running back or wide receiver. But even forgetting about that for a second, because obviously the much bigger offense is he's saying you can't be the biggest jerk in the league uh, and win the MVP. That's basically what he's saying, which also like, you know, uh, and Rodgers will go on to say this. We'll get in a second. Like, you don't know Aaron Rodgers either. So why are you calling someone you don't know a jerk? I've always hated that stuff. I've never, never given into personal attacks. It's just not something I do on this channel. I'll make some like, jokes about things here and there but I've never done like personal attacks. All I do is talk about what you've done on film. Like, like there's no need for that. Anyways, he would then go on to say, do I think he's gonna win it? Probably a lot of voters don't approach it the way I do. Uh, thank God. Uh, anyways, continuing with the quote, but others do who I've spoken to, which is that's uh, concerning, right? That other people are agreeing or at least saying that like they uh, think the way he does. Uh, he would also go on to say, but one of the ways we keep uh, one of the ways we get to keep being voters is we're not allowed to say who we are voting for until after the award has been announced. I'm probably pushing the envelope by saying who I'm not voting for, but we're really not supposed to reveal our votes. Finally, he says, I just think that the way he's carried himself is inappropriate. I think that he's a bad guy, and I don't think a bad guy can be the most valuable guy at the same time. Which, first off, OJ Simpson's in the Hall of Fame. All right, so get off your high horse a little bit. Because what's m most amazing about this to me is if your argument is that you believe that Aaron Rodgers cost his team a game because he was uh, unvaccinated, and that's the reason why, you believe that's the reason why he wasn't able to play that week, and that's the reason why he doesn't deserve to be MVP. Like, okay, that's not the argument I would make, but fine. That's an argument you can make. Like that, I can see the logic behind this. But this is not even saying that. It's just saying you don't like the way he carried himself and he's a bad guy and shouldn't be the most valuable. You can't be the most valuable guy if you're a bad guy. Like, no, you certainly can. However, then we get to this second article. One day after he declared he would not cast his NFL vote for Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers, the veteran Chicago sports writer admitted that he made a mistake in disclosing how he plans to vote to the public. When I first read this, I thought, great, fantastic. He Maybe he just, uh, what he said, he, you know, it was kind of on radio and maybe he's more of a writer. Uh, I don't know much about him. So maybe he just kind of said something that he, in hindsight, said, I shouldn't have phrased it that way. That's not really what I meant. I had a different point. Uh, maybe he was trying to be funny uh, and it didn't come off right. Uh, you know, something like that. That's what I assumed when I read this. Or maybe he just, you know, after getting some backlash, realized he made a mistake and does not want to say it again. Nope, that's not what happened. He said, I made a big mistake uh, on, again, the same radio station, uh, going to the next part of the quote. As far as what happened last night, it's on me. I screwed up. He said his error doesn't have much to do with Aaron Rodgers, but that he failed to respect the cardinal rule as one of the 50 voters who cast ballots for the Associated Press's annual NFL awards. Don't disclose your voting plans. The only thing they really ask us to, to not tell people is who we voted for until the award is presented. What they really mean is just don't talk about it. And the reason, in part, is because exactly what's happened here. He said, 
adding that he put the other voters in an unfortunate position. I feel awful about it, and I really wish it hadn't happened. Just an absolutely absurd thing to say, right? That he's like, okay, so all this backlash, I'm not, I don't care about that. Like, I was right about that, but I'm sorry that I said it. <laughs> that's, that's what he's saying because of the, uh, you're not supposed to disclose your voting plans in any way. That's the only thing that he regrets in this situation, which is just wild to me. I don't know. I, listen. I get that you don't want 50 people uh, who are voting to all think the way I do, right? There's logic behind getting 50 people who vote different ways. But you do have to, to some degree, make sure that your thoughts are rational and what you're saying makes sense. And the fact that that's not what's seemingly happening here is bizarre to me. Uh, and I also should mention, like, yeah, it is kind of a messed up thing to do to do this, because now think about all the other voters here. If you're someone like, I don't know, random MVP voter, let's say Tony Dungy, who has an MVP vote, he's kind of in a weird spot, right? Like, let's say he wanted to vote for Tom Brady, but Tom, uh, you know, now this whole stuff comes out and he's probably thinking, man, if I vote for Tom Brady, are people going to think that I am not voting for Aaron Rodgers simply because like, I think he's a jerk and are people going to get mad at me now for this? You are putting people in an unfortunate situation, uh, but I think what more people care about is just your completely insane uh, methodology for how you're voting on what's an important award. I mean, this is what gets people into the Hall of Fame is stuff like this. This is what is going to further the GOAT discussion in 10 years of people will say, you know, Rodgers has this many MVPs and Brady has this many, and it shouldn't factor in uh, what you think they do off the field and how you think they carry themselves. Like, uh, it, because you don't like him on the Pat McAfee show is not a reason to not vote for him. Now we're going over here. This is what Aaron Rodgers would go on to say about this whole situation. Uh, buckle up. It's a little bit long. It's about uh, a minute and 43 seconds, but I wanted to play it in full so you guys can get the entire context of this situation. After what you said last week about what it would mean to win your fourth MVP, what, what do you think of one of the 50 voters coming out and saying yesterday, quote, I don't think you can be the biggest jerk in the league and punish your team and your organization and your fan base the way he did and be the MVP. I think he's a bad guy, and I don't think a bad guy can be the MVP at the same time. I think he's a bum. I think he's an absolute bum. He doesn't know me. I don't know who he is. No one knew who he was probably until yesterday's comments. But, I mean, to and I listened to the comments, but to say he had his mind made up in the summertime, in the off season, that, you know, I had zero chance of winning MVP, in my opinion, should exclude, you know, future future votes um you know his problem isn't with me being a bad guy or the biggest jerk in the league because he doesn't know me he doesn't know me he doesn't know anything about me i mean i've never met him i've never had lunch with him i've never had an interview with him um his problem is i'm not vaccinated you know so if he wants to go on a crusade and collude and come up with an, an extra letter to put on the award just for this season and make it the most valuable vaccinated player, then he should do that. But he's a bum, and I'm not going to waste any time worrying about that stuff. He has no idea who I am. He's never never talked to me in his life. But it's unfortunate that those, those sentiments – it's surprising that he would even say that, to be honest. But, but yeah, I knew this was possible. We talked about it on Mac a few weeks ago. Um, but crazy. So, yeah, I mean, listen, Roger's not pulling any punches back, and why should he? I mean, if someone was saying something, you know, that mean to me, I'd probably say something similar. I have no issue with that. It's just a weird and unfortunate situation that happened, uh, and all I can really say is hopefully he is someone who thinks alone, although he said himself he is not someone who thinks alone. Other people think the way he does, which is unfortunate. I was kind of curious. These are the other 50 uh, MVP voters. At least these are the people who voted last year. Uh, one interesting parallel. I remember Peter King got in some similar criticism for uh, a similar thing where Peter King famously said he did not vote for Antonio Brown for all pro because he didn't like how his off the field stuff, he didn't like his off the field stuff and specifically how Antonio Brown missed the last game of the season for Pittsburgh because he kind of did a similar thing to Tampa Bay where he quit, although not in the middle of a game. Uh, so he got some criticism for that, although that's not quite, not quite the same thing as, uh, you know, 
just it being strictly off the field stuff and having nothing to do with what carries over to on the field. But still, uh, unfortunate, just a weird situation. And it's just amazing to me how there's, it's such a, such a prestigious award. And we kind of just let like whoever seemingly get the award and get the opportunity to vote on it. Uh, I don't get why we don't, you know, I've always kind of said with these kind of awards, I think that you should have to like, Everyone who votes on it should have to give a long, detailed, like just write a blog of a long, detailed post of why you have each person going where they're going. You know, explain it, explain your reasoning, uh, take it seriously, which I'm sure a lot, I'm sure most of these guys do. Uh, but it's just the people that don't. That's the issue. So uh, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know. What are your thoughts uh, on this craziness in the comments below? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.